Hi everyone. Okay, so um, this could be a little bit long. I hope not. I hope it's not too long. Um, so this video is called Grace. Do you really know what it means? So the other day someone asked me um, about grace and what it means. Um, I did a talk about the definition of grace in my Throne of Grace video a little while back. Um, but I did much more reading on it and it's becoming much clearer for me now. Most of us have been led to believe that the Amplified Bible's definition of grace is correct, which is God's undeserved favour, or as many people just refer it to as unmerited favour. It's so much more than that. We tend to think of Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 as a way of defining grace or when I say we, maybe I'll just say me. Um, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone, any man should boast. So God's gift to us is like unmerited favour. So when you read this verse, in your mind you tend to interpret it as for by a free gift from God, are, you sa are ye saved through faith? At least that's how I used to see it in my mind. Um, or shall I say you could go and insert unmerited favour. For by an unmerited favour from God are ye saved through faith. Um, but that didn't quite work with other verses like Second Peter, Peter 3.18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. So that would read but grow in unmerited favour, or but grow in the free gift of God. It doesn't really make sense. Um, but look at the full definitions of Thayer's, from Thayer's and Strong's. So Thayer's definition of grace is of the merciful kindness by which God, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, keeps, keeps strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of Christian virtues, of the Christian virtues. And Strong's definition, the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. So from what I understand of that, of those definitions, is this says that it's the Holy Spirit the, the Spirit of Christ, his power drawing us to him, giving us the, the gift of faith by which we believe the gospel, then his resurrected life regenerating us and quickening our mortal bodies, as in Romans 8, 8 to 11. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be ye that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that, dwell, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So grace is the divine influence of Jesus Christ on us, his saving power, and his life force within us. It is even our good works which the Spirit works through us. Philippians 2.13 For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Grace is how we are saved and how we live and walk in the Spirit. It bestows upon us spiritual gifts and produces spiritual fruit in us. Grace will transform our mortal bodies into incorruptible, glorified bodies at the rapture and will reward us at the beamer seat for the works that were performed in and through us by the Spirit of Christ, who is grace. So grace is Jesus Christ and his resurrected life brought about an even more amazing grace than he already had. Um, and John 1.14 says, Jesus is full of grace and truth. And in 16 to 17, and of his fullness have we all received. 
sorry, have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Everything that we have received from God is given and accomplished by grace. Jesus is the personification of grace and his spirit accomplishes grace in our lives from drawing us to himself, saving us, giving us righteousness, holiness and sanctification and giving us life, peace, gifts, the transformation firstly of our minds and then of our bodies and finally rewards. When you understand this, the reading... Oh, the reading of verses with the word grace in them becomes, I didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Well, it the, the, the verses that have the word grace in them, um, the meaning is just so much fuller, so much greater. Um, before I sort of didn't really fully understand what the verse was saying if I was thinking in my mind, of grace as unmerited favor or sort of a gift kind of a thing so here are a number of verses with grace in it and i want to go through them and see how how the meaning is is just opens up so we've already looked at second peter three eighteen. um so we don't grow in unmerited favor we grow in the holy spirit power working in our lives um, when we walk in the Spirit, um, that's grace working in and through us. Um, and when, what we need to grow in is um, our ability to rest in Christ and to be assured of the... Um, the truth of the gospel and, and our assurance and um, the fact that we are, our flesh was crucified and buried and we have been raised to new life in Christ Jesus and he holds nothing against us and um, we can he, he is the one who produces any good thing in us and we just get out of the way and allow him to do that and that is growing in grace. And the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ is part of that. It's part of what helps us to grow um, in learning to walk in the Spirit because we're keeping our mind on the things of the Spirit. Philippians 4.23 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Um, so it's not the free the free gift, the unmerited favour of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That doesn't really work. But it's like the Spirit of Christ, which obviously comes from our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you. His Holy Spirit power working in your life, let that be with you. Amen. That's awesome. Um, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Um, it's kind of like the Philippians 1. Um, so, yeah, the Holy Spirit power, the Spirit of Christ, his um, life force working within you um, and God's love and the communion with the Holy Ghost be with you. That's, yeah, it's amazing. Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, someone who thinks righteousness comes by the law is trying to um, keep the law. Um, but if they do that, they're frustrating the Holy Spirit power the Spirit of Christ working in a man's life in in them to produce the righteousness of Christ in that person. Um, because Christ, the Spirit of Christ, is the one that produces the righteousness or imputes the righteousness. It cannot be gained by following the law. So if righteousness did come by following the law, then Christ did not need to die. 
he died in vain in that case because it's the righteousness of the risen Christ that grace bestows upon us that is this is what I'm talking about it's just it just opens up the meanings of these verses to just mind-blowing oh, I'm I'm kind of blown away at the moment um, Romans 6 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace so we, we're not under law we don't have to follow do's and don'ts of the Ten Commandments or the Torah or whatever um, that's not how we're saved um, we're saved by grace um, the merciful kindness of God Jesus Christ working his spirit working in us to save us to draw us and when we're saved we're walking the spirit as much as possible and when we're walking in the spirit his life is is um, manifesting in us and people can see it um, and if you're walking in the spirit uh, sin shall not have dominion over you um, because the spirit subdues the flesh they can't operate at the same time it's one or the other so when we're in the spirit walking the spirit by the power of grace which is the spirit sin shall not have dominion over you Romans three twenty three to 24 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ or oh Christ Jesus um, so yeah in this case the grace is well as in all cases um, we're justified freely by his grace his Holy Spirit power working in us giving us merciful kindness um, giving us uh, crucifying us with Christ our flesh that is and giving us a regenerated spirit um, and we get the price paid for our sin by Jesus Christ it, it's given to us through the power of grace through the, through the spirit of Christ and therefore we are justified we receive him inside of us he is the justifier because he paid the price Ephesians 2 8 and 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and not that not of yourselves it is it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so we're not just saved by an unmerited favor we're saved by Jesus Christ the Spirit of Christ himself um, drawing us as I've said before drawing us giving us the gift of faith which then we exercise and then he regenerates our spirit crucifies our flesh buries our flesh with him and then gives us new life in Christ Jesus um, so that we can be seated in heavenly places with him it's just so much more than just you're saved by a free gift or something because that's in that verse too so we know it's grace doesn't just have to mean free gift like unmerited favor it can mean so much more than that but this verse clarifies that even if you don't talk about unmerited favor or free gift within the definition of grace it's still in this verse that um, salvation is a gift from God not of works lest anyone should boast so no one can say yes we're saved by grace but you've got to do something to earn that grace that's just no doesn't it this verses these verses are so clear 
Um, yeah, a lot of works people say don't take God's grace for granted. You've got to do your bit or else you don't deserve it. That's not what grace, they don't understand what grace is, not what, not one little bit. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the Spirit of Christ may rest upon me. Um, and I, I think you could replace where he says, My grace is sufficient for thee. You could re- say, um, take that power of Christ in the last bit and say the power of Christ is sufficient for thee because that's what it is. Grace is the power of Christ resting upon us or in us. So, um, yeah, while we're weak, he is strong and he is working in and through us and we have his spirit working within us. And if we were if we were strong, we would... Um, be subduing that and stifling it we need to be weak and you know get out of the way get, get our flesh out of the way and allow God to work in and through us um, weaknesses are a really good thing even though we don't like them because they allow the power of Christ his grace to work through us. Romans five fifteen to seventeen, but not as the offence, um, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man Jesus Christ, hath abandoned, abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned. So is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but to the free gift is of many offences unto justification. For if by one man's offence death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. Um... So yeah, uh, in verse 15, you know, death uh, death was powerful and it got everyone, right? So um, Adam sinned and death entered into the world and, and got everyone. But the grace of God outdoes it by, you know, it, it completely conquered death. Um and it was given freely by Jesus Christ. Um, and in verse 17, sorry, um, uh, they who believe receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, and they shall reign in life. So when we're saved, we obviously. We're saved by grace, the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. Um, But it doesn't stop there. Like we don't get saved and then he leaves us alone. Um, We have him in us working continually um, so that we can reign in life. So grace allows us to reign in life. Uh, And finally, no, not finally. Romans five twenty one, um, that the sin hath reigned, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin reigned unto death, um, but and that has an end because death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Um, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life, but grace reigns forever. Jesus Christ, the spirit of Jesus Christ and his working in 
um, the human race um, it will reign eternally he is eternal anyway that's that one and finally first peter 1 13 wherefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation revelation of jesus christ and this one talks about the the grace which is the um transformation of our mortal bodies into incorruptible glorified bodies at the rapture so that is accomplished by grace as well jesus spirit of christ who is going to uh, finally deal with our flesh forever i mean he has he has positionally dealt with it but he's going to eradicate sin the, the law of sin and death in our physical body as well and remove it and replace it with well it's like it, the bodies we get are not 100% new um, it's still our body but it's transformed and anything bad is totally removed and it is glorified um, so that we're like him so we can we will he's gonna basically we are in his body but he's going to make us like him like grace because as we see him face to face we will be transformed into his likeness um but you know still he is he is the power source we are in him and that's how we get our life and that will be how it is forever because he he's the source of everything anyway i just thought that this um looking at the word grace and what it really means is just really mind-blowing and it opens up the meanings of these verses so much more and um, we use the word grace so much but mostly it's not even thinking about its proper meaning Um, and we kind of give it a sort of a different meaning uh, to to our own purposes Um, so anyway I hope hope that was interesting and a blessing to you all right see ya